Hi, and welcome back. I had a different project planned for today. However, yesterday's video, when I mentioned that I was going to save this little salt shaker for a project, got a lot of comments and a few suggestions, and I thought it would be interesting to explore one of them today. So, we'll be right back. So we're going to take a look at doing something creative with a lone decorative salt shaker. Um, but before we get into that, how about we check in on our Portuguese friends? Now, for those of you who are new to this, uh, this is English as she is spoke. It's a book written by a couple of Portuguese gentlemen who did not speak English. Nevertheless, they took it on themselves to write a phrase book for their countrymen traveling in English-speaking lands, and the results speak for themselves. Now, they did this in 1855, so I thought we would find a section that would be right in their wheelhouse, something they couldn't screw up. So, today's entry is For to Ride a Horse. Now, the first is a full paragraph, so let's see what they do with a full paragraph. Here is a horse who have a bad looks. Give my another. I will not that. He not shall know to march. He is Percy. He is foundered. Don't you are ashamed to give me a jade as like. He is unshoed. He is with nails up. It want to lead to the farrier. He go limp. He is disabled. He is blind. That saddle shall hurt me. The stirrups are too long. Very shorts. Stretch out the stirrups. Shorten the stirrups. The saddle's girth are roted. What bat bridle? Give me my whip. Fasten the cloak bag and my cloak. Your pistols. Are its load? No. I forgot to buy gunpowder and balls. Let us prick. Go us more fast. I never was seen so much bad beast. She will not not, no, she will not nor to bring forward, neither put back. Strike him the bridle. Hold him that reigns charters. Peak strong, glee, to marsh him. I have pricked him enough but I can't to make march him. Go down, I shall make march. Take care that he not give you a foot kicks. Then he kicks for that I look. Sook here if I knew to tame Hicks. That is not even English. So I guess if we try to stay with something they would be expected to know, we're just not going to make out any better. So, here is our salt shaker. Oh, and by the way, this is, uh, this is just cherry soda. This is not beer. I, I don't drink um, like this naturally. Imagine what it would be like if I were actually drunk. Good Lord. Now, let me show you first, before we even get started, let me show you some close-up pictures of the salt shaker.
Okay, as you may have noticed from the last picture, the salt shaker has a little cork in it that is very tightly pressed in. Now, the first thing we have to do to do anything with this is remove that. So let me show you this handy little tool I have. This is a needle on a handle. And I got this from my friend Karen, the one I told you about, who was quite an eBay success. And apparently Karen wanted to buy a couple of these and accidentally bought 10 or 20. And so she sent me some. So, you know, her unfortunate accident was my gain. I love this thing. I do all kinds of stuff with it. But this is the easiest way to get a cork out of a salt shaker like this. Needle. It doesn't have to be this. This just happens to be really easy to use because it has a handle. You could do this with a large needle. And um, I, uh, I use this uh, for a lot of things that I used to do with long doll rooting needles. Um, you can reroot a doll's hair with a long needle. It's about eight inches long just looks like an oversized sewing needle, but it doesn't have a handle. So this is very, very handy. All right, go in on the edge and drive your needle right into the cork and make sure you're going down on an angle So and go in a good ways. Now notice I'm going down at about 45 degrees and I've really put a lot of that needle in there. You don't want to just like put a little bit of the needle in because if you do you're likely to just break out a section of cork instead of getting the whole thing out just go right in there now you will be able to reuse the cork in most cases if i were to sell this i would replace the cork i keep a stock of new corks because corks will deteriorate over time so here we're just gonna got it in there we're just going to pop it out see cork and all one neat little piece the cork is really undamaged by the needle a cork is um, a, a cork is soft soft material and it when you take the needle out it will just sort of fill in the hole so here's my little cork I can use it again but in this case I'm not going to be putting the cork back in I have a hole here that is a little over a quarter of an inch in diameter. So this, by the way, is a quarter of an inch exterior diameter pipe nipple. Put that right in. Oh, yeah. That is just about right. Now, what we're going to do with this because it's just about a quarter of an inch, is in order to turn this into a finial, we need to make sure that we have a piece of metal in there that will go over the Lampart screw. So I have a piece here. This is called a shade rest. Now, let me show you a picture of a shade rest so you can see it up close. Okay, shade rest. This little screw portion on the top is the same size as a standard finial. And there are two purposes for this piece. One, you can screw it on to the end of the threaded rod that goes through your lamp and it will hold a shade. This is all you need to hold your shade in place. And this will accept your finial. You can also take this piece. Now, this is a standard finial. And you can just screw this in. See? And you can use this to uh, enlarge the finial hold. Uh, the finial hold. Now, we've discussed this before. Finials come in two standard sizes, eighth inch and quarter inch. 
Um, this is quarter inch. This is, in fact, a quarter inch finial. They still make them. Um, the quarter inch, and mostly that's older lamps. Let's see. If you have a quarter inch finial that you would like to put on an eighth inch finial screw, you need to reduce the size. So let me show you what a reducer looks like. Okay, very, very simple. It's just a little sleeve that, here, this, it's so tiny. It's threaded on the inside to eighth of an inch, on the outside to a quarter of an inch. So you can slide it right into your quarter of an inch finial. And now I can put this finial on a standard lamp. Now, our shade rest does the opposite job. Let's say I have a lamp that takes an older, larger finial, but the finial I want to use is a standard smaller finial. Then this is what I use. Now I get these. These are very inexpensive, by the way. Um, I think this one is a dollar and this is probably about 30 cents. I get them from my lighting supply company. Whenever I place an order, I always grab a couple extra of these because you know, it's just, it's, it's worth it to throw them in just so that I can have them. Because with these parts, you can make a lamp finial. Now, there are a couple of ways I can go with this. One is I can affix this little piece here. This is our shade rest. Just pop that little bugger in there. I would have to affix it. And then I would have to add our little reducer if I were going to put it onto um, a lamp that has a standard finial, a modern finial. Now, if I wanted to put it on some old lamps, not all, but some, quarter of an inch, this would be fine. It's one way I could do it. Another way I could do it is simply by popping this little piece inside. Now, if I wanted to do that, I think the first thing I would have to do with this piece is go in with my Dremel and just shave out that hole a little. And then I could pop this in. And fortunately, this has a little, uh, they call it a shoulder. It's a little collar on the bottom so that if I hold it like this on the side, it looks like a little top hat because it has that little shoulder. So for me, the easiest way to turn this into a finial is to take my Dremel, shave out that hole just enough so that I can fit this in, and it almost fits just the way it is right now, very short, and then just glue it in place. And given the fact that this is such a good fit with this piece. I think that's something we may do with this. But I definitely wanted to make you aware of the fact that there is another way to go. We'll take this, drop it in, and now it's raised up a little. Um, well, I would glue it in place so it didn't just rattle around. There. And I would then put my reducer inside this. Do we have another one here? Yes, we do. All right. I drop my reducer in here. And then I would have a perfect fit. Now, how would I hold it in place? All right, I know you're going to complain again. Hot glue. The reason I would use hot glue in a situation like this as opposed to um, 
anything else is because hot glue can be pulled out. This would be non-permanent. Um, I'm sure you know that that hot glue, I could poke it out with my little needle pokey tool, scrape the glue out. Um, definitely the way to go if you have a piece that you might want to use for another purpose later. Maybe it'll be a lamp finial now. Maybe you'll change your mind. So what about uh, if you were going to make a lamp finial? Now, let's say you have a block of wood, for example. Make yourself a lamp finial. At that point, I would say drill a hole. If it's hard wood, drill yourself a quarter of an inch hole, drop in um, a little reducer right into your hole. Remember, it has that little shoulder. If your hole is exactly a quarter of an inch, that little shoulder is going to drop down and keep it from just like dropping into the hole and going on to China. And then you would just glue it in place. It's that easy. If you had a soft wood, I would suggest you drill a hole of about maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. Take your little nipple, and your nipple is just a piece of threaded rod. You're going to need the threaded rod for your lamp. Um, you, you don't have to use a, you can use a whole piece of threaded rod. I would just use a nipple and twist it into the hole. Soft wood only, you're not going to be able to do this with oak or apple wood or anything that's really hard, but you could certainly do this with, with maple, for example. Um, no, I'm sorry, pine. You're not going to do this with maple. Well, that was dumb. Yes, maple is a very hard wood. You could do this with pine. Just force it in and then take it back out again. And that will give you threads so that you can actually screw this in. And that would be a very, very easy thing to do. So you have a lot of options. The key, however, is using our little um, adapters here. The shade rest and the reducer. That's going to set you up for your finials. And you can use them in all kinds of combinations. For example, um, you could drill an, eight, an eighth inch hole into your wood, pop this in, because remember, this is an eighth of an inch, this top screw. And then, even though this hole here is a quarter of an inch, use your reducer, take it down, and then your finial has this pretty little brass rim on the bottom. Now, for some of you, that might be something attractive that you would want. It's not all that different from the little brass piece on the bottom of this finial. Can we make finials? Absolutely. Um, the best finial making supplies are uh, the polymer clays that Lisa uses. I just show off one of Lisa's pens these polymer clays. You take a, a gob of polymer, oh yeah, you can tell I'm a real artist, right? Take yourself a gob of polymer clay here. Take this piece because you have the little aperture that you can mold around. Grab yourself your gob of polymer clay. If you are an artist, you can do something like this. If you are not and you're like me, it's probably going to look like a spitball. So you know, form your little spitball around the top, and voila, there is your finial. And remember, you need to put it on another piece, uh, on a modern lamp with an eighth inch. You use your reducer. Just drop it in, bang, bang, done. Um, I would say, absolutely, those of you who are creative, polymer clays are available just about anywhere. Um, Lisa, if you are watching this video, and, and you are a very good viewer, you always watch. In the comments, please be kind enough to leave some information about where one finds polymer clays. I'm not an artist, so this is, oh, this is just 
I look at this and it's, it's, I might as well be reading Chinese when I see something like this. So Lisa, let us know where to get this. I'm sure it's readily available. And you could create, well, I mean, if you're Lisa, you can create something like this and just make your own lamp finials. So that's how we do it. This one, as I say, very easy. I'm just going to clean out my little hole and glue this in with hot glue so that if I change my mind, I'm not going to have a problem getting that mess out of my salt shaker. And remember, I got my cork and I can reuse it. And I got it by driving a needle in at an angle and just very carefully levering it out. Oh, and by the way, if it doesn't come out quickly and easily on the first try, work it up a little bit pull your needle out, go in on the other side, do the same thing, and just sort of rock it back and forth until it comes out. And it will come out very quickly. Also, if you screw up and break your cork, and you have cork bits floating around, you get your needle, and like I say, something like this is good with the handle, but any long sewing needle, and you can just get in there and stab your little cork piece with this and pull it out that way. Uh, believe me, I've done that more than once. You can't imagine how many times I have broken corks in salt and pepper shakers like this. I'm shaking and it's like, oh yeah, well, we got to get that out of there. Needle, go in, just spear it as if you were spearing a little cork fish in there and then you can draw it out. It's remarkably easier, a great deal easier than it actually looks. Okay. All right. So now we know how to turn this into a lamp finial. Okay. So sorry about that. Um, I, I, as you know, it, it was the bad cat again. Um, he's just, he's in a mood. All right. Very quickly. Orange. Tidbit trays. This is our 25,000 subscriber tidbit trays. We have two of these. So two people are going to win the tidbit tray. Um, get your name into the running this week because the winner is going to be chosen next week. Barbara Ness, who was the winner of this tidbit tray has already gotten in touch. That will be going out to her tomorrow. Um, and by the way, tomorrow we're going to pack that up. We are also going to pack up a few other things because tomorrow is going to be a video all about packing for shipping. And Annie Rooney, this is your tray still waiting for you. Do get in touch. Okay. Have a great day. I will see you all tomorrow.